friends. I'm so grateful to be in Circle Square. And we have another friend joining us. This is awesome. Because this is why we're here, a sleepy friend. So do what you need to do to take care of yourself. So Vieira, do you want me to turn it over to you so you can welcome everyone and then we'll get rolling? Oh, yes. Please start. I'm just sorry that I will I will leave you for uh, the first part. I, I will join you for the second part because I need to go and teach. But Falka is saying if you need any assistance, she she is here. Okay. I've informed. We have informed everybody that is going to be recorded for those uh, who are not able to join us. Um, but uh, yeah, we are looking forward to all of this and thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for your commitment to this and your generosity of time and service making this happen because this has been many, many years in the making. Our original yes. email was several years ago. So super grateful. So please go do what you need to do and we'll get started. I'll join you soon. Yes. Okay, looking forward. Thank you, thank you. All right, everybody, so welcome. Is this the whole family? Is everybody here? Are we waiting for anybody else? This is everybody? I think it's everyone. Yes, one, two. Okay, yeah. great. So welcome. I'm going to share my screen with you all so that you can see the presentation. Oops. There it is. All righty. So, um, welcome. You're getting a little taste of the Virtues Project. So, this is going to be highly interactive. This is not a sit and get. And don't think that you can multitask and grade papers right now. Just kidding. Do what you need to do to take care of yourselves. And um, what I'd like for you to do is in your window, please rename your window with your first name and a virtue that you bring to our gathering. So when I put my cursor over my window, I see three dots and then I can click down and I'm going to change my, take away my last name and I'm going to type in the virtue of enthusiasm. This is the short list. The handout has a longer list. So I'm gonna call in self-discipline and be quiet and give you a minute to rename your window. And if you're having a hard time renaming your window, and what you can do is just put your virtue in the chat box and you can phone a friend, that would be me, and I'll be happy to rename your window for you. So I see that, um, yeah, people are doing it. And anybody need to put in the chat box? Okay, I'll put that up there. Thank you everybody for your patience. And since this is such a small group, this will be great because we'll really be able to um, hear everybody's voices. So I'm gonna move on if that's okay. And if you wanna later on change your name in the chat box, that's great. And if not, no worries. So I wanna, uh, uh, Lou, thank you, I will change you to determination. So first of all, I wanna thank you all for the love that you have for your children, whether it's your own children or your students, and your commitment and generosity of time by being here after a really long and busy day. So thank you, everybody. So let's just start with some dopamine. The reason that I'm going to share with you some memes and some cartoons is to increase the dopamine. When we're stressed out, we cannot access our prefrontal cortex. We react instead of respond. And when you smile, you feel happier, you're healthier, and you lean into the work, and you think that maybe we're gonna have fun for the next 90 minutes. So how teachers feel 
at the beginning of the day, first period, and then at the end of the day, or seventh period. Not if you can relate or how parents feel at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. All right, here's one just for parents. You're at the dinner or the breakfast table. So, how was your day? Pretty standard, butted heads all day. How about you? How many of you all during COVID have experienced times where maybe a little bit more frustration and butting heads with the people that you're living with or working with? I know where I have been, and I only live with my husband. Sorry, honey. Shh. All right, the moment, this is for teachers, the moment when it hits you, did I take attendance today? Or fill in the blank, did I do whatever I needed to do today? And then back to parents. Don't you take that tone with me. You get it? Two and four. All righty. Lord, give me the strength to hold on. This says until spring break. I'll just say nighttime, Friday, summer vacation, whatever you need to hold on to. And then finally, drum roll please, for the last cartoon. Don't worry, it's just a phase. The mommy and the daddy moon and the little crescent baby moon, right? Well, we all have phases. And the great thing about the virtues is that this exploration is life, lifelong. So I'm gonna make three promises to you. Number one is you'll know how to speak a new language. And the second one, you'll learn just a little bit about the five strategies for transforming the world. And the third promise is a little bit of magic that you can actually do at home or at school. Here are the boundaries for our time together. Just moderation. Let's be mindful to keep our sharings brief so that we can get through as much content and as many voices as possible. There's the raise the hand feature. You can just raise your hand if you want to share or just unmute yourself because we have a small group. Self-discipline. Please just be mindful to mute when you're not sharing, especially if you have little people in the back. And then finally, trust trustworthiness. Trust you'll know what to say. And if there's anything shared that's personal, that you'll keep it confidential. Thumbs up if you can agree to that. Everybody, thumbs sideways if you're not sure. Thumbs down if you disagree. All right, beautiful. Thank you for your cooperation. In the chat box, if there's any other norms or boundaries that you wish to share so that you can lean in to our virtual workshop, please type them in the, in the chat box. And I'm gonna just, I'm gonna add enthusiasm again. We're gonna have fun. Because when we have fun, we learn more and we remember more. So if there's anything else, feel free to put it in the chat box. All right, fast pace, here we go. I'm going to offer you an invitation right now. Clearly, you said yes to the first invitation because you're here. Yay, celebrate, celebrate. The second invitation is for you to put your own oxygen mask on first, to be here for yourselves first. First as adults, then in whatever community you live, work, and serve, and then for the students with whom are in your care. So I'd like to invite us just to do a check-in right now and then do some breathing. Is your mind full of all the to-do list items or are you mindful? And here's the first strategy for mindfulness practice, and I imagine that you do it. I'd like to invite you to just take three nice, deep box breaths. And the box breath is you inhale, let's say for four seconds, you hold for four, you exhale for four, and you hold for four. If four seconds each doesn't work for you, do whatever you want, but it's gonna be the exact same amount of time. So three box breaths 
And while you do that, think about what your biggest hope is for our time together. So here we go. Let's just take three nice deep breaths. Thumbs up when you stop breathing. No, just kidding. Thumbs up when you finished your mindful moment. Please don't stop breathing on my watch. Okay, so nod if you're feeling just a little bit more relaxed than when you first zoomed in, right? Just a little bit more relaxed. And if it's, if it's helpful, I'm happy to weave in some other mindful moments that you can do with your students and with yourself and your children. So the next one is let's, what we're gonna do is we're gonna not do this in the chat box. We're gonna unmute, yay, liberation. And only share if you want to. If you would rather type your answers in the chat box, that's fine. But here's what I'd like to invite you to share. Your name, it would be helpful just to make sure that I pronounce your name correctly. What's the strength of your, a strength virtue of your family or your class, right? And something for which you're grateful. I'm gonna add one more question. Would you also please let me know if you're here as an educator, as a parent or both? Okay, so I'll just start and then whoever wants to go next, feel free to unmute yourselves, okay? So hi everybody, I'm Dara. I hail from Maryland, right near Washington, D.C. And my hope is that your hopes are realized, that you'll know your nobility, and you'll be able to see and witness it in others, just using the simple language of the virtues. A strength virtue that I bring of our family and also of the classes that I work with is service really wanting to make the world a better place. And something that I'm grateful for is being in circle with you all, or rectangle on my screen. And I come to this work as an educator of 35 years and doing this work around the world for 15. And as the mom of a fourth grade teacher who will be 30 this year, and my son who's 27 applying to medical school. All right, I am now passing the talking piece to whomever wants it, unmute. Hi. Okay, Susanna. Yeah, hi guys. Uh, my name is Susanna, and I'm here as a parent. And uh, uh, what I'm hoping to learn from uh, this one and a half hour in our session is just to learn something new, some open another door to something else uh, that I didn't heard about before. And I'm grateful for uh, my daughter, for my family. And what I feel is uh, our strengths um, is that we, uh, no matter what, what changes are ahead of us or what we are going through, we always hold together. And uh, we, have a, we always make time for each other, especially for our kiddo. Yeah. Beautiful, thank you. How old's your daughter? Four, uh, five now. Five. Okay, so thank you for your courage being willing to go first. I'm gonna add some things because I'm modeling what you can actually do with your students in a classroom or in the family. If when somebody shares something and you're like me too, this means me too in sign language, right? So you can do me too, can you see that? Yep, me too, or you can just nod. You can thumbs up if that's me too as well, right? If somebody's sharing something and it's touching your heart or you're feeling compassion for them, you can just do this over your heart, right? And you can teach these to your students. If you wanna celebrate with somebody, what's that gonna look like? Right? A silent celebration. And if you really wanna celebrate, 
I mean, you could just go really enthusiastic, okay? And so the more that you can give your students an opportunity to be seen, heard, and valued silently, right? And also a way to interact, that's gonna help to strengthen the unity and the cooperation of your, of your students. All right, so Susanna, thank you for your courage going first. Okay. Who's next? Go ahead and unmute. Okay. So I'm here as a parent also. Uh, I have two beautiful daughters with kind hearts and I'm uh, very grateful for them and for all, um, my whole family. Uh, and I hope I will, I will uh, learn some, uh, something new and uh, maybe uh, uh, some ways how can I... Um, use the language of virtues because uh, I uh, really like the, the thought of this. So, and uh, the strength virtue of uh, my family, I think it is love, the, the most one. There are more, but I think love is the, okay. Yes. Absolutely beautiful. So now we're going to take it up a notch because you can do this with your students and with your family, right? Even if what's a virtue that you're bringing to the table this morning and you can say the virtue, you can also do a symbol or act it out, right? So if it's strength is love, everybody, how can you show love? What can you do with your bodies? Do a heart, you could do a hug, you could do a this. You could blow a kiss, right? So the more multimodalities that you use, the more you're going to see and reinforce the virtues. Is this making sense? So as we're going through, I'm gonna be modeling for you different engagement strategies. All right, this is just about being top of mind. All right, who's next? Okay, okay so I can uh, start. <laughs> My name is uh, Mayo. I am here as uh, as myself and uh, as a parent of a five years uh, son. And uh, my expectations or wishes from this session is uh, to find out uh, the true meaning of the words and learn how to use them in everyday life, maybe. Uh, uh, I checked the, the virtues before this lesson. <laughs> And I picked some, uh, some uh, which are closest to me. So I will, I will uh, say them all. It's like trust, empathy, fairness, gratitude, humanity, humility, optimism, responsibility. And uh, I'm grateful in general of all what happens because I think uh, <coughs> the all have some reasons and uh, we find out uh, maybe later the real reasons. And of course, for my son and family, that's it. So thank you, um, Mayo, for sharing. I'm gonna add purposefulness as well to your list because you did homework and you have that whole list. And bless you, Zuzana. Thank you. <laughs> All right, who's next? Go ahead. My name is uh, Tamara, or Tamra, you can call me Tamra, that's uh, in English what people say. Um, the, my hope for our time together is, um, I've, I've been introduced to the Virtues Project before and for years it's been fermenting what I want to do with it. So this is a review for me and a, so hopefully a jump start into um, the next phase of my life, which is um, um, something, I have some ideas about what I want to do with the Virtues Project. I think the strength in my family is um, hopefulness, um, hopefulness and uh, curiosity to learn and to keep to keep developing. Um, something who oh, something for which I'm grateful for. I think it's that hope that I have um, about uh, that it's possible to to carry forth an ever advancing civilization. And then this is, I think, what what helps me. Like, okay, I want to I want to um, I need to find a way to um, apply that. And I'm here as, an edu as, a, as a wife <laughs> and as a um, 
a mother of, uh, um, of a girl who's going to get married this Sunday on Zoom. <laughs> and I'm not going to be there. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. But I'll be there on Zoom. So that's the, that's the a part. Um, she's 25 and is an educator of some 30 some years. Thank you. Thank you for your openness sharing and congratulations. Yeah. Okay, Lou. Hello. Hello. Do um, you want to share your video or would you rather not? I am on, on the, my iPad. It says I'm on. I will try to switch it off first and then switch it on again. Oh, that's... Am I there? Yes, there you are. We can see you. Yay. Okay. I still don't see myself, but anyway. Um, my name is Lubica in Slovak language, but it's much more easier to just say Lu. So <laughs> that's the short version. Uh, I'm a mother of three. Um, and I'm a home educator. And also I'm a clinical psychologist. And I, I think that the virtues, um, I'm very interested in that because I think I can uh, use it uh, in everything I just said, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. So, so that's why when I came across um, um, this offer, um, um, I invited myself kind of. <laughs> and, um, um, I think that the virtue of our family, I guess the str strongest one is the courage, the courage to have our own lives independent um, and creating the best we can for our kids and for, for ourselves in marriage and also humanity. And what I'm very grateful for is our homeschooler community of um, kind of like-minded families. And I would like to offer um, something I can give all those children. Um, I mean, in the way of, of uh, character building more. Yeah, that's it. So Lou, how old are your children? Uh, one is eight, one is four, and the youngest one who is sleeping next to me right now is one. <laughs> oh, beautiful. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everybody, so much for your openness sharing. Did you notice a difference between how your heart felt at the beginning when we first started and as we went around our circle? Just did anybody notice anything different? Or did it feel the same? You can unmute. I mean, we're such a small group. Much calmer as we went around. Calmer. Other people, thank you. Did other people feel a little bit calmer, a little bit more settled? Softer. Softer, yeah. How about open-hearted? Like, ah, oh, feeling connected. Anybody feel a little bit more connected? A little bit, yeah. You know, and, and strengthening some trust. So this work in part is really about starting to become more mindful. Just mindful. When we focus intentionally on those virtues, then they get strengthened and elevated. And energetically, psychologically, emotionally, physically, spiritually, you know, intellectually, things begin to change in really positive ways. So how many of you all have ever heard the song, See Me Beautiful by Red Grammar? I knew Tamara had. All right, I'm gonna play it for you. It's really super beautiful. And you can either watch the video or you can close your eyes and think about who comes up for you, who comes to your mind and heart and why. And after that, I'll just give a very quick history of the Virtues Project and how it's changed my life um, with a container of some teaching that you can use for your families um, as a way to keep moving forward. Okay, so I invite you to listen. Oh, you know what? Actually, let me stop sharing for a moment and 
sure again, but I'm sure that I optimize this time so that you can hear the video well. Okay, and here we go, going back. All right, so listening to see who comes to your mind and heart. See me beautiful, look for the best in me, it's what I really am, and all I want to be, it may take some time, it may be hard to find, but see me beautiful, see me beautiful, each and every day, could you take a chance? Could you find a way to see me shining through in everything I do and see me See me beautiful, look for the best in me, it's what I really am, and all I want to be, it may take some time, it may be hard to find, but see me beautiful, see me beautiful, each and every day, could you take a chance? Could you find a way to see me shining through in everything I do and see me If you want to type in the chat box who came to your mind, feel free, or if you just want to unmute very briefly and share, that's fine too. My parents. Parents. Who else had their parents come to their mind? Yeah, anybody else? Somebody different? All right, then I'll share. So this little guy, um, ah, tomorrow, a 13-year-old I'm actually current, spending time with. Yeah, Slavka, your sister. Thank you for your openness sharing. So who came to my mind was this little guy, Thomas. About 15 years ago, I was teaching kindergarten, and when I met Thomas, the first thing he said to me was, do you have a nurse? And I said, yeah, what's the matter? I have a boo-boo. What's the boo-boo about? My daddy hit me. Why did your daddy hit you? Because I didn't change my mama's bedpan. Both of Thomas's parents were in wheelchairs. He had had a lot of trauma in his life. And so, as I know you know, um, his behavior was not the most beautiful or cooperative his heart was so compassionate and he was so helpful. Thank goodness the year that I had Thomas in my classroom, I also found out about the Virtues Project. And it taught me to look underneath those really challenging behaviors and to see what the meaning was, right? When we're acting out or we're crying for help. And it's not just those not so beautiful behaviors of children, there's also those less beautiful behaviors from adults. Are you with me? So I was able to acknowledge Thomas for his service, for his enthusiasm when he called out all of the time during class, right? And invite him to self-discipline and patience, give, waiting to give other people a chance. 
And so this was our whole classroom. There's my kindergarten class. And so I found out about the Virtues Project when I was honored as Disney's Elementary Teacher of the Year. Not a better teacher than anybody else. I do have a big mouth. And I think who's ever up there said, Feldman, this no child left behind, this focusing on academic rigor and testing is taking the joy, meaning, and purpose away from teaching and learning. I'm going to give you information about this Virtues Project, and you're going to leave the classroom, volunteer your time to the founders of the Virtues Project for seven years as director of education, because I don't have any money to pay you, but you're really going to end up living this, these strategies for your own healing because of your own trauma, using these practices in your classroom, but at home with your then 12 and 15 year olds, and then sharing this work with others around the world. And I was obedient and that's what I did. So this project totally changed my life in the classroom. Joy, meaning and purpose, cooperation happened. And then at night, I would go home and I would put the key into my door and I would open up the door to these two. This is a snapshot in time. They were yelling at each other. The house was a mess. They were being totally disrespectful. They hadn't done their chores, their homework, or walked the dog. And I did what any other loving parent would do, especially with, while they were yelling at each other. What do you think I did? You can unmute for the answer. Yelled at them so that yes, they would do what they're supposed to do. Yes, I did. I yelled at that. How many times have I told you to clean up this mess and do your homework before you play and stop yelling at each other? And then I was like, okay, I am now doing to them what I don't want them to do. And then I remembered. Have you all seen this little magic book? It's the Family Virtues Guide. Oprah Winfrey said of this book that it's the instruction manual that our kids didn't come with. Did you all come with instructions? Did your children? No. So I called a family meeting. I was angry. Have you ever had a family meeting? They're not really fun, right? These two, 12 and 15, that's what they look like, and my husband. And I said, do you want to read about setting family ground rules or shall I? And what do you think they said? You do it, right? So I opened up to page 31 to 33, and I started reading how to set family ground rules. And then, I took these educator virtues cards and I threw them across the table because I was in amygdala hijack, was not happy with them. And I said, okay, everybody, pick each of us, we're going to pick a virtue that we want to bring into our family. Now I'm telling you all this story because you can do this with your own families and you can do it with your students too. So, my daughter picked respect, my son picked flexibility, because back then he liked to manipulate things and people. My husband picked responsibility, and I picked orderliness. And we read the cards both sides, and then we talked about what those virtues would look like in our home. So virtues are just universal, positive qualities of character, right? They're the positive ones, but they can be used out of balance, right? You can be too purposeful or too enthusiastic, right? We need to balance virtues with other kinds of virtues. So for example, when I'm so enthusiastic, I can make people really annoyed. Um, and maybe I don't really think through things logically, so even though enthusiasm is a strength virtue, I need to call on my growth virtues of 
patience, moderation, and self-discipline. So before I go on, just take a moment to reflect for yourself. What's a strength virtue of yours that you can access really easily? When people are, are giving their eulogy about you, they're gonna say you are you were so fill in the blank. You can type it in the chat box or not. Okay, strength virtue. And then that strength virtue does a lot of good, but think about when it gets you in trouble. Is there a balancing virtue? One that maybe you're not so, you don't access so easily that you might want to strengthen. And so I'm going to um, actually, uh, Tamara or Tamara? Tamara? So, so you're helpful. When your helpfulness, when, it, when you become too helpful, what's a virtue that you might need to balance? I think like setting boundaries for myself, like self-discipline and self-discipline. Absolutely, right? So self-discipline, moderation, because we can be overly helpful and when we do things, especially for our children, that they can do for themselves, we send them the wrong message that they are therefore helpless. Is this making sense, everybody? Okay. And because of time, I'm going to keep moving on. Um, I see that there's a lot of strengths in there. Zuzana, resilience, Slavka, reliability, uh, Mayo, enthusiasm. And so, and Lou's balancing virtue is caring. Absolutely. And these can change in different circumstances. All right, so now back to my family. Aha! These are the artifacts from 15 years ago. So we each picked a virtue that we wanted to bring into our family, but now we're going to make them values. The difference between virtues and values are virtues are universal. Values can be culture or group specific and not all values need to be virtues for example do you value family do you value time right those aren't spiritual qualities but they're values some people value money or power those are also values but they're not necessarily positive right so we each went over and we talked about what respect would look like in our house and what respect looks like in our house in the United States might look a little bit different than what respect would look like where you all are in your family. So for us, it's we will respect each other's privacy and space. We will knock and ask permission before entering a room. We will give each other our full attention when someone is talking. Eye contact, not iPhone, iPad contact, right? We're gonna be really being respectful, looking at each other. We'll only say and do kind things, and if we can't, then we're gonna go take ourselves to a quiet space, do some breathing, whatever we need to do to get calm and peaceful, and then come back and act in a respectful way. That's what it looks like in our family. And then positive, not natural, and logical consequences, right? If we're respectful, there'll be a feeling of more loving unity. When we're not being respectful, then there's going to be hurt feelings, and we're going to have to do some things to make amends. All right, I want everybody to run in place because you've already been sitting too long. Running, 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 or rubbing your hands together for a state change, or stretching, whatever you need to do to stay engaged and stay with me. So then, we have our four virtues and I gave my family, all of us, a piece of lime green paper. And I asked them to fold them into quarters. And you can watch this video to get the directions again. And I had them each put their virtues, the four virtues at the top and their name in the middle. And my daughter goes, Oh, great. So now, Mom, when we're not doing the virtues, you're going to write it down. I said, no, Danny. 
when I see you exhibiting a virtue, I'm going to give you a virtues acknowledgement. And she went, oh, and she relaxed. So up on the refrigerator went these green pieces of paper and the four virtues. And for the next, oh no, where are they? My props. Mm -hmm. See, this why orderliness coming back is helpful. For the next 48 hours, I caught them being virtuous. Oh my goodness. Danny, thank you for your orderliness hanging up the towel. What was the virtue in that statement? You can unmute. Danny, thank you for your orderliness hanging up the towel. What's the virtue? Orderliness. Orderliness, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And what's the evidence? What did she do that was orderly? No. Yeah, she hung up the towel, mm -hmm. right? If I had just said, Danny, thank you for your orderliness, she wouldn't have had a clue what she did because she is wildly creative. Anybody have one of those creative, messy souls living under your roof, right? So I gave her the evidence. If I had just said to her, Danny, thank you for hanging up the towel, that would have been courteous, right? However, I would have missed the teachable moment that orderliness is actually putting something back. Are you with me? Okay. And so I did that really for two days. I filled up their their four squares and it absolutely changed overnight how we interacted as a family. There's more that I can tell you about um, a process that we did to end sibling rivalry. Remind me if we have time at the end. All right, are you with me so far? Okay, so moving, moving, moving. They're the founders of the Virtues Project. It started in 1988. I'll give you a minute just to read the screen because you can't listen to me and read at the same time. All right, and it has grown. It's all over the world now in 140 countries and um, in all areas and walks of life. It's absolutely changed my life as a person, as a mom, as a friend, as an educator. And my husband has joined me on this journey. So here, what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take a 10 minute break. However, I'm going to play the video clip of when Linda was on Oprah. So if you need to go take a break, go take a break, because remember, you're gonna have this video and you can watch it again and again and again. Um, it's about seven minutes. And when we come back, we're gonna roll up our sleeves and get into the virtues themselves. All right, you doing okay? Okay, so we'll come back to that. Here we go. What time is it? It is about a quarter of, so five of the hour, be back. And thank you for your enthusiastic participation. I'm gonna play Oprah. We've been talking to people who stood up because of their sense of fairness and goodness and did the right thing. This is Linda Kavlin Popoff, who uh, has written a book called The Family Virtues Guide, which gives parents lots of ways to instill values in your children. Parents are always saying, you know, children don't come with a guidebook. This is one. Uh, and this helps you to get them on the right track for leading a good life, because oftentimes we don't know how to do that. You bet. We yeah. feel pretty helpless with our kids sometimes, but what we need to know is that they come with innate virtues born within them. And our job as the first educator is to bring out the best in them. Linda says that uh, she has five strategies to help you as parents, hardest job on earth, uh, teach your kids about virtues. First of all, finding teachable moments. What does that mean? Well, all day long there are moments that are where a child could be practicing a virtue. And instead of shaming them and saying, don't be naughty, you know, why are you so stupid? All the things, the shaming words that we used to hear as labels, what we can do is to take what happens and turn it into a virtues moment. 
for example, if kids are fighting, we don't have to go in there and fight with them and say, why are you guys so mean to each other? We're all to the virtue of peacefulness and say, there's a peaceful way for you to solve that. Let me see you act peacefully now. Or if a child is getting antsy about dinner, you can say, it's taking a lot of patience to wait for dinner, isn't it? You use that language of virtues, and it's a teachable moment that brings out the best that's already inside of them. Set boundaries. Setting clear boundaries is very important. Children crave authority. But if there is not enough authority in a family, the child will become the authority. Uh -huh. So we need to have... Everybody needs to have... Ain't that the living truth? Yeah. Every family needs to have four or five clear ground rules that are based on virtues. For example... I think today's parents are more afraid of not of setting boundaries because they're afraid their kids aren't going to like them. Exactly. They want to be... kids like you no matter what. They really do. They do. They, I think it's because they felt so oppressed by too many rules in their families. So they're, they're into what I call opposite-itis. They have gone to the op opposite extreme and become a pal to their kids. But children need four or five ground rules in the family where it prevents power struggles. Like? Like, for example, we only eat in the family room and the kitchen. Um, we all help cleaning the chores, cleaning the house. We are, this family is a peace zone. We treat each other, we talk with respect, we act with respect. And then there need to be consequences, very clear consequences. For example, one of our family ground rules was, you are home at 6 o'clock no matter what. And if they were home at 6.01 or 6.05, they would have had the consequence. So my boys were out uh, playing, and they were about 7 and, and 9, and they got kind of lost. And they, they opened the door at 6 o'clock. They fell on the floor. They were covered with brambles, and they said, did we make it? Did we make it? And I, <laughs> they were, like, terrified. <laughs> now, what was the terrible consequence? It was the next day you stay in the house. Whoa. But what was terrible for them was they didn't want to lose their record because a ground rule is non-negotiable. And they cherished that rule. They had never broken it before. Ground rules, is, is, for example, if you say, we are a peace zone, this family. Yes. That's non-negotiable. Non we respect each other. We treat each other with a sense of peace in this house, period. Exactly. Yeah. And if, if kids get, they get angry. Anger is a natural emotion. But we can learn to use peaceful language when we're angry. We can say, I'm furious. By using the language of virtues? No, by just telling our feelings and saying, I ex yes, actually they do. They say, I expect you to treat my things with respect. You came in and you stepped on my model. Now, what are you going to do to make up to me for that? That's part of it is establishing justice. In the is family. that using the language of virtues? Yes, it is. Okay, back in a moment. We've been talking to people who stood up and did the right thing. Okay, honoring the spirit. Honoring the spirit is a real important thing in these days, Oprah, because so many of us are just out of our minds. We're just not connected. And so we... Anybody feel like that? <laughs> Everything's go, 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 and you feel like you just don't have enough time. It's the key. I think that should be number one, but, I, but I, <laughs> it's hard to do it with kids, I think. Well, kids are Because very... you are spirit, come from spirit, and if sure. you honor that first, everything else falls into you place. Bet. That's well, why I'm say, the happiest girl in the USA. Anyway, <laughs> honoring the spirit. It's because of your sense of reverence. Mm -hmm. And we say every family can have a routine of reverence. Come together in a sacred circle. Come together and have a time of quiet meditation. Whether you're religious or not, you need routines of reflection. Our kids are too often technical wizards and moral incompetence. Yeah. And they've got to have quiet time. They need time for the beauty of nature. They need time that is non-compulsory time with their parents. Yeah. And we all need that sacred moment, that sacred time every yes, day. Yes, because ask yourself this, parents, those of you who, you know, are of my generation or you're younger, you can also ask yourself this, too. We have more technology. We have more stuff. Your kids have more things than you ever could have imagined. Yes. But are they really better off? They're not very happy. You know, the <clears throat> what America needs to understand, Oprah, is that these kids that are killing each other, that are killing themselves, killing their parents, they have lost a sense of meaning. When they are often, when they're interviewed and people say, why did you do it? They say, I was bored. Drive-by shootings for someone that they never even knew. What is boredom but the disease of meaninglessness? And so we say in the Family Virtues Guide, you've got to give children a sense of meaning. Help them remember that they are people of honor. They are people of justice. They have generosity in them. <laughs> 
And if they do something generous, don't just say, that's nice, say, that was generous. Because I think, I think parents, which I, I honor that it is the hardest job on earth, Oh yeah. but that um, a lot of parents have lost their way in trying to raise kids who, had a lot, who have a lot of things instead of raising kids who have something to give to the world. Exactly. And that something they have to give to the world is themselves, their yeah. best self. Mm -hmm. And there is a huge crisis of self-esteem, especially with these kids that perpetrate violence. They are longing to belong and they are looking for a source of meaning. Yeah, they're disconnected. They are disconnected exactly from their own spirit. Mm -hmm. So we need some spiritual practices that we do every day or every week. And we have examples in there about having a family gathering where you choose a virtual week and you go into what is idealism. These kids are at an age typically in their early to mid-teens where they are craving idealism. It's their natural um, mm -hmm. virtue to cultivate them. They want to make their mark on the world. They want to have a big dream and make it possible. And that is the time for you to, to honor that and to tell them the stories of your family. That's another way to honor the spirit. Tell them your family stories about when Uncle Benny did a really brave thing and rescued someone. That's what these kids just love to hear. Again, thank you for the thank Family you. Virtues Guide. Coming up. Susanna, you were so on purpose. Did you um, listen so intently? Welcome back, everybody. Did you have any questions or comments that you wanted to share? No, not really. I was just, I just liked what she said, everything. It was all made a lot, especially the beginning when she was talking about if there is not enough authority in your family, the authority will be created by your child. Yeah, that's, that's very true to, to set the good boundaries to, like not too strict, but you know, to find a balance. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Good discernment. I am. Um, that was for me in the Virtues Project. That was the greatest gift was learning how to set boundaries. Mm -hmm. I, in true uh, transparency, um, my mom had the disease of alcoholism, and mm -hmm. I was um, abused by someone not in my family. And so there was just all, had all this trauma. And so I didn't come from a healthy background of how to set boundaries. And so when I read the Virtues Project, it taught me how to keep my fat, juicy, compassionate heart and find a spine mm -hmm. and really lead in a restorative way and an educative way. And perhaps that's the next workshop that we all get to do together, or even chapters um, in the book, pages 31 to 33, really, really helpful there. And it becomes a practice. When we start with knowing our own nobility, our own worth, and we're able to see and honor and recognize it in others, that, that's a really great place to start. So thank you for your openness sharing that. And welcome back, friends. Let's see. Is, oh. We have 30 more seconds. Any other questions or comments from anybody? We have everybody almost back on. Oh, we are, okay. So, hope I don't spill things. Um, I don't know if you all can see my cape, my super power cape. So basically, these virtues that we all have, all of us, every single one of us and our children too, and even the people that we, I don't know, get on our nerves. We all have all these virtues in us in potential and they are our superpowers. And so let's go back to our follow the leader dance party. So you all know how to play follow the leader, right? Good. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start and I want you to do a little move and then I'm going to pass it to, I'll call out your name, you do a different move and we'll do what you're doing and we'll keep going all the way around just for about a minute and then I'll let you know why we're doing it. Now, here's the thing, if you want to pass and you're like, I'm not doing this lady and you can't make me, you're right. Watch very carefully. Here's your pass move. All right, welcome back, Viera. We're going to start with you. Hello. Hello. So, no. I'll just, when I call your name, you're going to do a move and we're all going to do the move. All right. So I'm going to start and then Viera, you're up on deck. 
So here we go. I'm going to put joyfulness because I saw people smiling. Okay. All right, so that's the short list. In your handout packet on page two is the long list, but what was one virtue that you either felt or you showed, and what's the evidence? Courage, yeah, so maybe you participated, you were afraid, but you participated anyways. Yes, Lou, creativity, because everybody had different and funny moves. You guys got it. <laughs> All right, so detachment, maybe, do you wanna say a little bit more of, of the evidence of what the detachment looks like? looked like? Yeah. I detached, I detached from the work, so I just joined in. And <laughs> okay, so you, so you stepped away from the, from the work, and, and detachment as a virtue is using thinking and feeling together so you could make smart choices, right? So you knew that, okay, you could, your work is never ending and that perhaps this time here was maybe more important for you in the long run. Thank and you. slap good joyfulness because you felt that happiness, that joy and friendliness. Yes, Susanna, people were laughing together. If people chose to pass and nobody did, what virtue might they have called on if they chose to pass? And you could just unmute. Ah, my oh yes, optimism, there were smiles. So even if you chose to pass, Self-discipline. Do you want to say a little bit more? About uh, the virtue of self-discipline? Yeah, what would self-discipline have looked like? So if they chose to pass, maybe they were calling on self-discipline. They were really going to go wild, so they chose not to? Yeah, or something like setting my boundaries. I just don't feel like doing that right now. <clears throat> ah, personal self-discipline. Absolutely. Assertiveness. What you just described was assertiveness, right? Where you were doing for you what's right for you without harming anybody else. Yeah. You were speaking your truth, absolutely. Okay, and could be determination as well. Determination, not, you know, this isn't right for me. I do this work all over the world and I was in New York City with men and women. And this one woman said that she passed 
because she called on modesty. In her faith tradition, women and men do not dance in front of each other. So here is the punchline for why we did this. Every moment is a virtues moment. Every moment is a virtues moment. The more mindful we can be of these virtues, the more easily we can access them. Does that make sense? Okay. And by you all identifying the virtue and the evidence, you've really already taught yourself the language. So let me go on mm, time-wise. Yeah. I'm gonna share with you this video. It's very quick. So I want you to notice, I want you to listen with your heart and notice the slight shift and then we'll get into the language. So here we go. to my sign. I wrote the sign, but in different words. Thanks, love. discipline by muting myself. Thank you for your helpfulness letting me know. Did you feel that slight shift? Right? Slight shift. And that's really about honoring the spirit. I'm going to teach you direct instruction around the virtues language, but it's really going to be up to you to practice it. Okay? Because you're getting a really a, a little taste, but you're already doing it. All right, it's just being a little bit more intentional. And so it's just gonna be a little shift. So in your handouts on page number four, uh, five and six, if you have them, and if not, no worries, but page five and six of the handouts, this is what I'm gonna be referring to. But everything you need is right on the screen, so just know that you have that for later, all right? So when we speak the language of virtues, the language of virtue basically has three parts. What's the first part? The stem, right? It's that opening phrase. Things like I see, you are, please be, thank you for, whatever is comfortable for you. Then that second part, hi, that second part is the... Yes. The virtue, right? And so that's that universal positive quality of character. And then the next part, which is really essential, is the evidence. Evidence. Absolutely. Because sometimes if we just say, hey, I see your, um, I see you being so creative. If they don't feel creative and there's no evidence, it could create cognitive dissonance and actually do more harm than good. 
okay? So we want to have the evidence. And when we have the evidence, it helps them to see that this becomes a transferable skill. And so I want to give you an example of that. I want you to imagine that I'm five, not a problem, right? And I'm learning to tie my shoes. And I'm doing it and I'm turning purple and the sweat is coming down. What do you say to encourage me? What do you say? Keep going. You can do it, right? Everybody, you can just keep your, your um, you can keep unmuted. That way you won't have to, everybody can just be more engaged if you want, right? So that didn't hurt my self-esteem. However, what if you were to say, I see your determination working to tie your shoe without giving up? What's the evidence? Not giving up. It's not that I tied my shoe. The evidence is I didn't give up. So now I'm six years old or I'm 10 years old and I'm doing my homework in the corner and I'm not going, mom, dad, help. And instead of walking by and patting me on the back and saying, good job, you say, I see your determination working through that hard problem without giving up. Giving up. Mm -hmm. So now, what time, I mean, how old are your children when they get driver's license? 18. 18? Okay. So now, you're my mommy's and my daddy, and I'm 18, and I'm learning how to parallel park in the minivan on a snow day. I don't know if that translates, but in the snow, right? And thank goodness, you're still developing your virtues because you need them, and you say to me, I see your determination. <laughs> learning how to parallel park without giving, giving, up. Up. giving up. So now I get my driver's license, I go to university, I get married, I have a couple kids, I become a teacher, there's COVID, I have to teach, and mommy, and daddy, and work, and clean, and nurse, and everything else. And there is nobody patting me on the back, or you, but what do I know? I have what? Determination. And it means not giving up. If we just change our language and we focus on the good and the strengths, that's gonna help build their capacity. If there are nine flaws and one strength, as educators, we're taught to teach to strengths, but we often take our red pencils out and look at what's wrong. The more that we focus on strengths, the more that they they um, strengthen. Now, there are, are you with me so far? Yes. Right? Okay. Now, there are times when we need to teach and guide our children and adults to virtues, and there are mistaken behaviors where we need to also correct them. So there's four different times to speak the language. We want to acknowledge the virtues when we actually see them, especially when they are growth virtues. If you have a, a child who is just so messy, but they actually were orderly, don't say, oh, great, you finally put the crayons back in the crayon box. Just acknowledge them. Oh, I see your orderliness, putting the crayons back in the crayon box, right? So acknowledge, acknowledge, acknowledge. Now, a virtue's guidance is when you say, okay, get ready to call on a virtue. So right now, we have about 21 minutes left. I want to invite you all to be really purposeful and stay focused on every word I say without looking at your phones, etc. Right? So I'm inviting you to the virtue of purposefulness. And I gave you evidence. Stay with me. It could also be a virtue's guidance when you're teaching what a virtue is. Because virtues are developmental. Think about the virtue of honesty. Do you play games with your young children? Board games or cards, right? Mm -hmm. So when they're five, honesty might be not cheating. You don't look at somebody else's hand when you're playing cards, right? 
But when you're in fifth grade, honesty might also mean when you're doing research, you don't go to Dr. Google, copy and paste, and put your name on the assignment and hand it in, right? That now you're going to teach that honesty or integrity also looks like giving attribution and citing where you got this information from. So that's a virtues guidance. Got it so far? Yes. Okay, running, 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 state change or power clap. On the count of three, let's clap together. One, two, three. Okay, beautiful. So that's just a way to wake up your brain and say, be here now. A virtues correction is when there's already been a mistake in behavior. So, hmm, I wonder if you can relate. Have you ever said this or had this said to you? How many times have I told you to clean up your room? Your definition and their definition is never the same. Never the same in your country too, right? And when we say that, like even just thinking about it right now, aren't you getting stressed out? Mm, that's not good. And because our affect, our kids mirror. So instead, we're gonna ask them to, we're gonna invite them to a virtue. Please be orderly and put your dirty clothes in the hamper and close your closet door. Putting the clothes in the hamper and closing the closet door, that's the evidence. And then it's the virtue of orderliness. That could be a virtue's guidance ahead of time. Or if you walk in, they didn't do it, you invite them back to it again. And it takes the sting out. Are you with me? Yeah. All right. And then the last one is a virtue's thank you. So let's say that um, somebody bakes you some delicious cookies and they bring it to you at your favorite. And, um, Normally, what would we say? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right? And that's courtesy. That's, we're being courteous. But if we said, thank you for your thoughtfulness, taking the time to bake my favorite cookies. We're showing our generosity, but we're elevating their virtue. And it's going to help strengthen it in them. Right? Or thank you for your generosity buying dinner for me. Right? It's going to strengthen those virtues. And so that's the way to speak the language of virtues. And what I did was I gave you another sheet. And in it, if, hi, if you just start with the behavior that you want, right? So maybe you want them to um, listen before responding. Then what virtue do they need to develop in order to do so? You might feel like you're being disrespected, but they just need to develop the virtue of patience or self-discipline, right? So that so you're going to work backwards, looking for the behavior you want, then the virtue, and then the STEM. So I see your, and you want to acknowledge it when you see it, I see your patience waiting for me to finish speaking before, you know, you, you answer my question or whatever it is. Thumbs up if I'm making sense. Okay, beautiful. All right, so now here is this. Traditionally, we say, good job, remember to hand in your homework. How many times have I told you to clean your room? Thank you for dinner. Drum roll, please. This is what the same thing looks like, but this is through the lens of virtue. Bless you, sneezing on the truth, right? Of virtue's language. Feel free to take a screenshot if you want. The more specific you are, the more easily they're going to be able to practice that. Okay? You good? You can just do a screenshot. Okay? May I move on? All right. Thank you for being so purposeful. Whoa, okay, I already did that. All right, I already did that. All right, so what I would encourage you to do, and we'll do this afterwards, is to either text, email, Facebook, write an acknowledgement. You know, you could say, you could use this 
as a template or just, hey, I see your, your patience, you know, waiting until mommy or daddy was done with the workshop, you know, waiting quietly or, or for dinner or whatever it is. And you can just start getting little love notes. If you have other folks that you're not with on a regular basis, um, I have created a new app. Have you seen the Virtues Cards app? Anybody seen it? All right, and, and so you can download it and it's the sample deck is free. And so I don't know if you knew this, but what you can do is, so, ah, there you go. So let's say I want to send the virtue of appreciation. I can click on this arrow and then my social media comes up, my texting comes up, Facebook, I can click and then I can add a virtues acknowledgement and they also receive the gift of the virtues card. So that's a resource for you. Also in the new app, there's the journal feature. So if you click on the journal and the pencil, at the top, it's the general reflection, but you can also actually choose the virtue that you wanna reflect on. So this be could become a, a virtues practice. So in the evenings at night, as you're talking, maybe you do a virtues pick in the morning with your family and you'll be, you'll be looking for the virtues throughout the day. And at the end of the day, you sit down and as a family, and how did you demonstrate this virtue? Or how did you see this virtue demonstrated? Or how could you have demonstrated that virtue? And you can put it in this journal and you'll have a record. And then finally, with the new app, there's also reminders. So if you click on reminders, you can have just a reminder to do a virtues pick throughout the day or get little push notifications of just uplifting messages to bring you back to a virtues moment. So hopefully that's a tool that can help you. All right, so now we're gonna go into the second strategy really quickly, which is um, recognizing teachable moments. And it's instead of shaming and blaming, it's naming the virtue that you want. So do you know someone who's stubborn? Just one person. All right, I want you to say with me three times, you're so stubborn and notice where that, where you feel that in your body. All right, ready? Here we go. You're so stubborn. You're so stubborn. You're so stubborn. Point to where you feel that in your body or just say it. Yep. Solar plexus. Solar plexus, right? Doesn't feel very good, does it? What's the virtue of stubbornness? Determination. Determination. <laughs> now, same person, same reasons. I want you to reframe and rename, and this time, holding that same person in your heart, say with me three times, you're so determined, and notice where you feel it in your body. Here we go. One, two, three. You're so determined. You're so determined. You're so determined. Where do you feel it in your body? Closer to heart, higher up. Closer to your heart, right? Isn't that wild? Everything is energy. I'm looking down at you, the video's up there, but know that I'm looking at you down there. So you feel it in your heart. This is heart-centered, uplifting, and really truth of who we are. And it takes practice. And so we go from shaming and blaming all of the things that can destroy conscience to conscience builders. I'll let you read that for a minute. Mm -hmm. Did anything jump out or have a question about? Even overprotecting, right? When a young person falls down, if we rush in and we pick them up every time, they're not bleeding to death, right? We should let them be so that they know that they have agency. 
that they can get up on their own, right? Um, that's where we can create those helpless hand raisers. We can honor their pain and say, oh, you know, awesome steadfastness or resilience. I see your boo-boo and you got up. Really proud of you, okay? So because of time, let's see. Yeah, we have time. Does everybody have access to the Virtues cards by any chance? At least one person? Yes, no? So what I'd like yes. to do is I'm gonna put you in a breakout room with one other person and invite you to, I'll just give you five quick minutes. So maybe one person will shake their phone, come up with a, a card and read the card front and back, double tap to get on the back and then share how that virtue connects with you. Your partner will listen and give you a virtues acknowledgement. And then you'll switch. Your, the person who listened first will then share how that particular card resonated with them. And the person who went first will give them an acknowledgement. So you'll do one card per team, just figure out who wants to do the virtues pick. It's not a conversation. You're listening with receptive silence with your ears and your heart. And then if you finish early in less than five minutes, feel free to have a conversation. I'll bring you back. Are there any questions? Yes. But the Next. acknowledgement after reading it, an acknowledgement for their... No. So good question. Sorry, I don't do a great job of explaining this when it's a time pressure. So I'm going to take a breath. Okay, so let's say that I, I shook my phone. I read the card. Once I read the card, I'm going to say, ah, serenity. So the way that serenity is bringing to me right now is it's important that I stay in the present and I not worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. That gives me serenity. Mm -hmm. And if you're comfortable with the virtues and you can give me an acknowledgement, like, you know, Dara, I hear your trust, staying in the day, or your wisdom and discernment, knowing that you have no control over what's happening in the future. Great, you can offer an acknowledgement. But if you're not yet fluent with the virtues, then you can just say, Thank you for your openness sharing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your openness sharing. And the next person will say, okay, so the way that this virtue speaks to me is, and the partner listening to that reflection will either give an acknowledgement or say thank you for your openness sharing. Mm -hmm. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for your assertiveness. So I'm now going to put you all in your rooms. Oh, let me stop sharing for a moment. All right, breakout rooms. So it is 11.23 here. I'm gonna give you four minutes. How about that? Okay, so, and I'll let you know when there's a one minute, when there's one minute left. Okay, so create breakout rooms and go ahead and click on join. And one person just do a virtues pick and then you can start sharing. So go ahead and click on where it says join. And Lil, can you see where it says join? Yeah, perfect.
Welcome back. I know that was way too quick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. so, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I know that was super, super quick. Yeah. yeah. And I really just wanted to be able to be respectful and honor your time. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> now, you can see how that would be powerful, right? Okay, and even if you don't pick with somebody else, if you make the commitment to, as it says, on, hi puppy, on page 11 of your handouts, plan, pick daily, look for the good in self and others, acknowledge and appreciate often, and notice the teachable moments instead of shaming and blaming every single day, that's gonna not just change your language, and the way that you view the world, it's gonna change your life, I promise. Couple of other things, and then I'm gonna stay on as long as you want. I just really wanna be respectful of your time. Page nine, there's the self-discipline Cookie Monster video. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. So if you just Google Cookie Monster self-control self is what he calls it, watch it with your kids, give you three strategies to be able to strengthen self-discipline. It's basically positive self-talk, stand up straight, and take a deep breath. There's also the shield that you can do, a personal shield as an activity with your family. You don't have to make it a shield, use your creativity. And then the last piece are those virtues vouchers so that you can start looking for the good in your, on your children and yourselves and your spouses and acknowledge. And then my, my book, you can access for free. I'll send a follow-up email. You can download the PDF and the audio. If you don't want to listen to me squeak for nine hours, you can slow it down, but then you have to listen for 11 hours. It's your choice. I'm good with it. I'm going to have three extra minutes. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your generosity of time. I'm going to end with a water trick, and then we'll just do a quick round, and I'll stay on for questions. All right, let me see. There you go. Okay. So we all come into the world with all of the virtues in us in potential and pure, noble souls. But then things happen to us. Maybe we learn differently than other people. Mm -hmm. Maybe we speak another language. Maybe we've lost somebody that we love, or there's been some abuse or neglect. What happens is our true sense gets clouded. Mm -hmm. However, when we remember to speak the language of virtues, we recognize teachable moments mm -hmm. instead of shaming and shaming. We set clear boundaries based on restorative justice. We honor the spirit of ourselves and others. And we listen with compassionate curiosity. No longer is who we are clouded. We know our inherent nobility and are able to live more joyful, meaningful lives. It's been a joy and an honor to be in Circle Square with you. I wish you much joy, meaning, and purpose, always and in always. Mm -hmm. And that's a magic trick that you can do at home. Mm -hmm. And so I thank you so much for your enthusiastic participation, for your generosity of time and enthusiasm. How about if you just want to do a, a quick whip around um, one word or one phrase about how you're feeling about our time together, and then I'll stay on for questions or comments. So anybody want to just share? Or type it in the chat box? Mindful. <laughs> grateful. I'm ungrateful. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And I'm super grateful as well. It was really a joy to be with you. DaraFeldman.com, my blog and under resources, not very orderly. I already told you that I confessed, but enthusiastic. So I pulled together a bunch of resources. Mm -hmm. Under resources, the third drop down box 
is a whole bunch of resources for the full two-day intro to the Virtues Project. You just got a taste. But if I can be of service to you in any way accompanying you on that path, and even as facilitators, let me know, because we can do this with other people around the world who are interested. Okay? So send you big love and big hugs. And if you want to watch the Cookie Monster video, I can show it to you, or you can watch it on your own. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Yeah, I just would like Good, to say. Good, you have I just would like to say I hope uh, that this is not the last uh, time that we are having you uh, in our workshop, and we will continue uh, when any any time. <laughs> uh, hopefully, very soon. And. Uh, uh, you were asking about one word, but I would like to say all the virtues from the list, but I don't want to take anybody's uh, anybody's time because we deserve it, really, and uh, I am, I am speechless. <laughs> I'm sorry that I, I was able to join you only for the, for the second part, but I will be watching the, the recorded version, and we will be uh, definitely sharing the version with the uh, Thank you. That's very kind of you. And feel free to share the handouts with everyone as well. Mm -hmm. Lou, did you want to say something? Your box looked like it was highlighted. <laughs> uh, I was trying here so I can see Vierka who was talking. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, I am very inspired, and I am I am thinking about maybe how to um, <gasps> make it work for families who have very small children when you were like giving the example of uh, children who can already speak for themselves, they can clearly read the cards, they kind of understand the words in it. Mm -hmm. So that's a great I, question. I guess, oh. Well, I guess, I guess it's in the book or somewhere. No, I can tell you. So I appreciate your thoughtfulness bringing this up. So young children, very young children, don't have amnesia yet. They haven't forgotten their inherent nobility. They know who they are, right? And mm -hmm. so when we speak the language of virtues to them, oh, hello. Thank yeah. you for your peacefulness being so quiet right now while I answer mommy's question. Right? So I see your enthusiasm and joyfulness laughing, right? If that's, if you get into the practice in that way, it's gonna go here, right? So that's yeah. one thing. Use the language with the context clues. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. two, there are the family cards, and you can use the family cards. And mm -hmm. if the religiosity, they're, they're interfaith, but you can just change God to good out, great out, uh, good orderly direction or great outdoors, mm -hmm. right? You can modify it as you're reading the cards to them. And you can make your own virtues card. Take, mm -hmm. take photos. Of the Actually, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna mute this so you can hear. You can take photos of the children engaged in a variety of things, and then you could say, "This is Jake. He is generous." So maybe it's a picture of your child sharing. Mm -hmm. This is Danny. She is orderly, folding laundry or helpful or whatever. So taking pictures and then using concepts about print, right? So that they are starting to not only learn the virtues, see it in themselves, but their mm -hmm. early literacy skills. Mm -hmm. I could go on for days, but mm -hmm. hopefully that makes a little, that makes sense. I got this, mm -hmm. I started doing this with my mm -hmm. five-year-olds in kindergarten. And if they could, the line leader would pick the virtue card and read it, if they could. If not, I would read it, and then I would unpack and modify it for them, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and put it into child-friendly terms and say, okay, so today, boys and girls, the virtue that we picked was, oh, I don't know. Um, I always go back to responsibility. Mm -hmm. How might we show responsibility today? when we're doing our work, when we're walking down the hall, when we're packing up, when we go home, okay? Mm -hmm. Come back at the end of the day, need a D. Who was responsible? 
-hmm. Who saw somebody be responsible? How? Let's give them a virtue shout out. So-and-so was responsible and took the attendance to the office. So-and-so was responsible and put their homework in their folder. Okay, so tonight, when you go home, or when, you know, if you're homeschooling tonight, when you're working independently, how can you show responsibility? So the more that it's top of mind, I'm warning you, this becomes an obsession. You won't be able to get rid of these virtues, and your life will never be the same. All right, you're gonna to try to go for a walk outside and you see a piece of trash and be like, responsibility. If I see it, it's my responsibility to pick it up. You may as well start taking trash bags with you when you go for a walk. <laughs> so really meaningful question, Lou. I appreciate you bringing that up. Anybody else have a question? Or comment, ideas? Okay, maybe that's for next time. So, oh, Tamara? Yeah. Did you want to oh. share something? Oh, it's oh. in the chat box. Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, lots of questions. questions. Okay, well, so my Thank email you. address, I'm going to put it in the chat box. Mm -hmm. Or actually, yeah, it's just easier. Here's my email address, virtuesmatter.com. And then my, my phone number on WhatsApp is this. And we can always just schedule a time to Zoom. Okay, and mm -hmm. so virtues matter is the other is the, the same thing. I do this work with my husband, but the Dara Feldman has resources for parents and educators right now. Yeah. All right, are we good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Yeah. So Perfect. Everybody, Thank you. give yourself a great big hug. Mm -hmm. and at Forward, so grateful to be in circle with you. I'll download the video and then I'll send Viera and Safka the links, and you can share. Yeah, definitely. Bye. Bye. Well. All right, lots of love. I wish you well. Thank you. 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 Thank